I'm going to call the uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order at uh, five o'clock. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? I believe there's one. The, um, the uh, executive session should be amended to I forget what the language is, but not personnel matters. Correct. Okay. Um, so that is an amendment to the agenda. I have three potential items under uh, okay. under other business. Um, Paul has been approached by uh, Jesus Peter the park, the beach. Asking, Redfield Beach. Yes, asking mm -hmm. us to grade the road, which apparently we have done in the past which I was not aware of. No, I, wasn't asked, either. I asked him that question and he said, yes, we've graded it in the past. Uh, but now he's asking us whether we want to, I don't know how much time it takes. He responded, but he didn't tell me, you know, it's going to be eight hours of greater time or four hours or whatever. Yeah. But that's one item. Um, we have outstanding the question of uh, music licensing uh, for the concerts. And I thought Elliot was going to be here, but maybe he isn't. I don't know. Hopefully he will be. Um, and then we've got an interesting response from the state of Vermont, and you have the letters in your packet with regard to the uh, traffic and speeding issues in Putnam Belt. And oh, the, so I just want to talk about that for a minute. The interesting, uh, the interesting thing in that, they clearly said in that that uh, we were responsible for speed enforcement on the state highway, which what? has never what? been my understanding Maybe of the way it works. Maybe because it's in Middlesex? No. no. It's in our town. Yeah, but right. we, do, we don't do speed enforcement out here on Route 2. They can. We used to, and then yeah. any money no, no, they no, collected no. went to the state. You're yeah. saying that's correct. That it's our but they're reform. saying, but he's saying anyway, in his letter yeah. Yeah. that it is absolutely our responsibility and they have no responsibility, which okay. I think is incorrect. So anyway, just, just yeah. quickly, quickly, uh, those three things. Uh, we do have, I have uh, one guest, Mike, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. I'm Mike Grua. I'm just here just so you don't know I'm hiding behind a computer somewhere. <laughs> okay. Um, and we should introduce our- I don't our have that letter. No, we don't. She was going to get it and I guess she I forgot. I think I have it to pass out. Oh, okay. About the green. I'm Mary Skinner, uh, select board member. Phil Hayek. Steve Martin. Linda Cole, treasurer. Peter Hood, select board member and chairman. And Liz Scherf, select board. And Cindy is our is our acting uh, select board assistant tonight, taking uh, taking the minute. Sarah is out of town. Um, so with that, the first uh, the first item on the agenda is the executive session. Uh, to discuss a matter of uh, public safety, a concern about public safety. Um, is there a motion to go into executive session for that purpose? So moved. And is there a second? Yeah. Second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we are now in executive Wait, session. So he was supposed to not here? Did he leave? No, okay. I think he left. No, he left. He had to oh, go. He he oh, okay. Go to he wanted you to, to know that he left. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. So what I will do uh, is reach out to him and say, I'm sorry, our executive session was so long. If you would like to appear before the select board, okay. let me know and I'll get you on the agenda. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Peter, I missed that. Peter, I missed yeah, that. Yeah, what is that? Oh. I'm going to reach out to, I'm going to reach out to uh, Mike. Okay. And just tell him, I'm sorry the executive session went so long. If you wish to appear before the select board, please let me know or let Sarah know and we'll get you on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to say that he mentioned that um, he would appreciate hearing back. Yep. Yeah. No, no, no. That's only, uh, oh, stuff here. I'm not this dandy. All right. You got mine? Uh, hold on. It's got to be right here. Let's see what this is. Consideration of obtaining yeah. licenses so that the copyrighted music may be played at dance yep. down Correct. summer concerts. Yep. I'm Mary Skinner. I don't think I've met you. Ron's sweet. Hi, Ron. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Ron is on the bandstand committee with me. Okay. And 
Phil Hayek. Yeah. Steve Martin, select board. Dorinda Crow, treasurer. Peter Hood, select board. I run. Uh, Liz Sharp, select board. Hi. Um, could I say a couple of things? I mean, I... Uh, oh, I'm hoping you're going to say a couple of things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least two. Um, so I may have created a misunderstanding here in a conversation that I had with you, Peter, on the phone. And that is that Ron got an email that he then forwarded to members of the bandstand committee, and I received that. And I read it as a demand for payment, which is what I think I characterize yeah. it as yeah. to you. Okay, yeah. from somebody named John Bondi. And it was a strange email. It talked about the need for musical licenses under ASCAP and BMI and a third copyright organization called CSEC. CSEC. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked at it and I read it as a demand it's that this guy was sort of speaking or purporting to speak for the three copyright organizations, was saying that Middlesex had to pay. Uh, a licensing fee for each of them. Uh, that's not what it was. It wasn't a demand. It was an inf informational email from a friend of Ron's, named John Bondi, to Ron saying, heads up, musical Pretty licenses worried, may yeah. be necessary. So there has been no demand. ASCAP, BMI, CSAC have not focused on Middlesex okay. in any way. So well, that's I, good to know because I, my understanding was right. that they had they had the bullseye on us. <laughs> oh boy. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> they don't. No. Okay. They don't. Um, and one of the things that I did when I saw the email and mistakenly thought it was a demand was to try to figure out, first of all, how much would this cost if it's 25 bucks or something, what's the big deal? And for ASCAP and BMI, there are form licensing contracts available online that you can look at. Phil, you may be familiar with this from music. Um, and, and each of those two have uh, fee schedules. So for a town our size, I think up to 50,000 people, if it's a town, uh, the total f of fees for BMI and ASCAP is a little bit above $700. It's like roughly 350 each. CSAC apparently is higher than that. CSAC represents a smaller number of artists. So if you're, if you're not familiar with ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, they sort of hold the rights to songs Music. that have been written by various yeah. artists. CSAC has, I don't know, Frank Zappa and some others, a smaller stable, but apparently a higher fee. So we could be talking about somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500, maybe higher a year. And that's something that the bandstand committee doesn't have the money to pay. So I was concerned about this. That's why I called you, Peter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and said, oh, we've got a demand, which we don't have. Um, and it seems to me that, and, and we talked about this, it seems to me that the likelihood that any of these organizations would focus in on a small town, I mean, they're apparently close to 40,000 cities and towns in the United States, there are hundreds of thousands of restaurants and clubs, all of which theoretically are supposed to have licenses. The likelihood that they would focus on Middlesex is incredibly small. And it's maybe it's near zero, especially since this ended up not being a demand. So um, you know, I wanted to well, that's, that sounds a lot better than what we were thinking Doesn't it was. <laughs> yeah. we, thought the, we thought the bullseye was on the side of the town hall here, and they were oh. ready to open fire. Um, that is nervous. <laughs> yeah. So what, interestingly enough, both Phil and Dorinda have experience with this, uh, with this issue. Um, so they filled, us in, they filled us in a little bit. I guess, you know... When I, I and I went online and looked at the and looked at the stuff and I saw that fifty thousand and I, I thought, geez, you know, here we are. We have four or five concerts a year, with a few people. What do we do? Do we restrict artists to only play their own music? Do we, uh, you know, I was I wasn't sure what my response was going to be, but that was my initial response: is that, you know, we can't be paying fifteen hundred or twenty two hundred or whatever it is. Uh, Right. It, just, it just doesn't work, and we don't want to. We don't want to, We don't. You don't. And we don't. I think want to charge for uh, people to go to those bandstand concerts. So what's 
So maybe our appropriate response, which is I think what I said initially, was to put the masks over our heads. And I mean, what, what's the risk? What's the risk for a musician who does this? Can they go after the musicians? So the uh, uh, my understanding is that the is that the responsi responsibility falls on the venue, not on the not on the musician. These are annual fees. Right. I would imagine that if if someday they developed a central database so that the musician would then input, they go to a club and they, they actually enter all the cover songs that they've Yeah, done, I look at the they, reporting obligation, that was, that was daunting. <clears throat> yeah, although it's no more complicated than credit card, pro, than, you know, credit yeah, card right, transactions. Yeah, it's all automated. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, not, it's not a real big deal, uh, technically. Um, uh, so that if, if such a system were in place, then if I were a musician going to play somewhere, it, it could then be incumbent upon me to enter all this, the cover songs I'm going to do, and maybe the venue will get charged ten cents or twenty cents for you know for for a play of a song, instead of instead of this amorphous formula that these unregulated uh, uh, PROs can do. It, it, they're pulling numbers out of the air. What's PRO? PRO is Performing Rights What's Organization, mm -hmm. and that's these these three organizations. So, do the musicians actually make any money? Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Uh, eat, uh, they do. Well, some do. Some some like do. Like if you're playing the beat, well, the Beatles are dead. But back in back well, in no, no, the, the rights are dead. dead. No, the rights are, no, dead. No. <laughs> the rights are far from dead. <laughs> but the based based on a uh, on a. Um, a, uh, um, a paper that uh, a, a Grammy-winning uh, instrumental guitarist out of New Hampshire, he did some research and put this together because he was concerned. Um, back in 2015, anyways, I don't know what's happened in the last few years, but uh, I believe it was ASCAP, their method for deciding how much I, as a musician, a member of them, would get paid a year, they, they recorded by their own methodology that they didn't publish because they're not regulated, they recorded 60,000 hours of radio and 30,000 hours of television. And, and based on the percentage of that 90,000 hours that my songs were played, that's how much, that would determine how much money I got. So if I'm an independent songwriter, I'm not getting anything. No. Right. Uh, because they're not paying. When, when you when when a song is performed uh, live, or it's on an album, or on a TV show, or in a movie, you've got a, you've got line items um, mm -hmm. specifically for each instance of the song being used. But when you're playing bandstands and open mics and small venues, you don't have a playlist. Yeah. So they have so these three organizations by their own secret formulas come up with how much per year a flat fee that the venue pays uh, um, and and because it's a flat fee there's no way that each musician knows how much to contribute to that mm -hmm. flat fee if they were responsible for paying so mm. Mm. that was a quick lesson and and the other the other piece is that is there are plenty of venues who are just like you said you stay, you know, just don't yeah. respond. Just stay under the to the threats. And it just seems, it just seems, as you said, Elliot, it just seems so unlikely to me yeah. that they would pick out our four. I mean, first of all, it's no money. I mean, they can't even afford to write a, write us a, a demand letter to saying we need to have these licenses. I guess if we got the demand letter, we might have to do something. Uh, you know, there are places that occasionally do get get uh, voicemails left. They've actually them. been pretty aggressive in, uh, in this area in the past yeah. couple of years. Yeah, yeah. but I think it was about, uh, according to, to um, uh, when I spoke to Lauren Parker, she said that about the time that letter went out from the state, they pulled back. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah, so apparently article. there were some demands that were directed at a, at a couple of local venues in Montpelier, really small ones. Oh, like North Branch? Lauren yeah, North Salt Branch, yeah. and they went to the yeah. AG's office. And I remember this from my last days in the AG's office. And there was a, an informational demand, which is essentially a subpoena, that mm -hmm. apparently went out from the Attorney General's office to the PROs. And that pushback, that may have been the, what caused the demands to evaporate. That, you know, suddenly there was no more there's an article put out by the Vermont League of City and Towns in their most recent newsletter that they are coming down on 
um, park, you know, small parks and things like that. Oh, it's in okay. this month's newsletter. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I understood that. I talked to Susan Senning at the League of Cities. She's okay. the attorney who wrote that. And, um, and it, it was my understanding that this was a, sort of a general article on, you know, here's what the law is and under the copyright law, you know, everybody's responsible for paying these fees. But I didn't think it identified any particular push in the direction of Vermont or uh, cities and towns in, in Vermont. I mean, you know, the, the financial reality is that, you know, in addition to the unlikelihood that we would be picked out, uh, ultimately their remedy is to file a lawsuit in federal court. And, you know, over... They can't give you a fine. Or would they it's not a fine. fine. It's, it's not a they, fine. Would, they would sue to Perhaps. collect their yeah, fees. That, yeah. yeah, so, I mean... The retainer to the law firm <coughs> to represent ASCAP or BMI or CSAC would s so far exceed what they could possibly recover. So it's not, you know, it's a theoretical matter. It's not impossible, but it seems to me that there are lots of it's venues. Like small claims for federal court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, I and mean, it, you know the situation, Mary. And it does. It, it based on so when I first moved here in 2014, I ran an open mic at the North Branch. Mm -hmm. And it was it was several months after I started that that the North Branch and Capitol Grounds and Nutty Steffs they were all getting bothered by at least one of the PROs and they stopped doing live music. Mm -hmm. And then Lauren Parker, who's a real go-getter, uh, she uh, she organized ten or twelve venues plus me to go to the Attorney General's office and just testify as to the harassment that was. That was uh, being. What's that? I said that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like their their method op of operation is to first make a bunch of calls and send emails out to demand money, and uh, and, like debt and collectors. They're kind of. <laughs> they're kind of like it feels like organized crime actually. They're strong arming, um, trying to strong arm people, and uh, and I'm. I'm a full advocate of, of musicians getting paid for their. As am, as am I. I mean, yeah. I, I come from uh, my my whole family for generations has been in the book publishing business, and obviously yeah. copyright, you know, all all that stuff is a big deal. And yeah, became you know when photocopiers first came out, and people were you know, anyway. Yeah. So people should be people should be paid. I'm willing to pay a little. I just don't want to pay a lot. Yeah, exactly. Well, what they're asking for sounds like a lot for it's the little a, tiny it's a town of Melbourne. Huge amount. Yeah. It's a, and the amount they ask from venues mm -hmm. far out, outweighs the number of seats that they have in their mm -hmm. in their establishments. It's not reasonable at yeah. all. So. Well, and it's and it's too bad because as as you just said. You know, I was ready to say, I was ready to say, if we're going to continue the bandstand concerts, we can only have people play their own music. That doesn't actually solve the problem when it comes to the... It doesn't? Well, it doesn't always. It doesn't always, but there was a case that I read about uh, where a musician was the only musician in this venue, I believe it was in New Hampshire, this was like years ago, mm -hmm. like four or five years ago now, and... Uh, he only played original material, but because he had joined one of these oh, PROs, he's a member, yeah. uh, he's a member and they're obligated he couldn't even to pay play his yeah. own music. Right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so you have it's to make really sure they're twisted. not a member of PROs right. and play yeah. their own music. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, what, what do you think? We think we're glad that you told us that. We don't have to do anything. Let's just wait okay. till next time. Keep your head okay. excellent. Yeah. 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 Let's not. Let's not uh, advertise our concerts too broadly on yeah, right. the internet. <laughs> so I, I just want to say I, I did some research, as you did, Peter, to try to find when I thought that John Bondi was yeah. demanding to like who is John Bondi. So I, I found a website called JohnBondi.com. I found the same thing. You did, same and he posts pictures that you can't really see here, but pictures of undersea creatures, cuttlefish, and yes. sea anemones. Mm -hmm. And he has other business, but this is like the big thing on his website. But he's your friend. 
Christ. That's the weirdest thing. Who the hell is this guy? So this John Bond. He's got a cuttlefish fetish. And it's funny. Bandstand members are we're constantly emailing each other, updating each other, and just staying on the same page. And this one just kind of. When I slip through. Well, uh, but it's good news. In all seriousness, I guess what I would suggest is that we restrict the promotion of our concerts to the local area. What makes sense? Not oh, be yeah. out. Oh, I, I don't know why we'd be doing anything That's else other than that. Except for maybe seven service. days, it might be the only uh, yeah. Yeah, statewide. I think so. Anyway, I mean, maybe maybe consider stopping the seven days. Then I don't know. It just. Fly below the radar and keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, I guess yeah. is I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. And in these days where you can do, you know, Google, Google, Google searches, um, you know, and put down concerts and probably every, you know, everything's going to come up. So if they really want to find us, they'll find us. Right. And uh, the concert series this year begins on July 10th with Myra Flynn, and so 6:30 Wednesday night, July 10th. Invite you all. And so, so should we be telling musicians that we are not doing this? I don't think there's. We don't need. Issue, I, don't think, for I don't think anything has to be said mm -hmm. at all. I just think okay. we continue on. And yeah, and I mean, I, as a musician, think, as a musician, you don't expect when you when you play at a venue for this issue even to come up. Well, I am a musician, and I. No, and, I know you. Yeah, are. yeah, and uh, uh, um, no, uh, and as far as far as being a musician. Uh, whether it's just or not, um, the, the, the responsibility doesn't fall on my shoulders and the right. risk doesn't fall on my shoulders for playing cover tunes in a venue. It's totally up to the venue. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I, you know, and because their method of operation seems to be to first make multiple calls and send multiple emails, if we haven't gotten any calls or any emails, See, that's, I was afraid that's what we There's were getting. There's no action. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. Well, that's where Elliot thought this way. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, anyway, well thank is you. Everybody, is everybody comfortable with I'm that, that approach? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Thanks. 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 Well, Thanks. Thank you for coming you down. Yes. Yeah. Have a good meeting. That was, that was much better news than yeah. me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. May all your news be <laughs> yeah, exactly. great. Good night. Um, that's important. I know, I know this is a little strange, and I know we're, we're running out of time, but I just want to go back into executive session for a quick minute. Someone would make that motion. So for a public safety concern. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, you're off. I haven't done it yet. Well, it's due penalty. back in April. Penalty, yeah. Well, you know, I have an appointment next Monday for getting my car inspected and it expired at the end of April. You have an excuse. I do have an excuse, but I didn't even notice it until I was on my way to Maine. I didn't even notice it was four. All right. Oh, I'm a no treasurer report. <laughs> yeah. Really, I mean, it's just you've got a copy of the budget as of. And seventy thousand dollars short, right now. No, right? that's actually no. We have seventy thousand, but I have to ask Patty because the one I got on the twentieth of the month was we only had fifty thousand. Now we have seventy thousand, but it looks like she did something with deferred revenue. So I'm going to find out on that. Where's but how can the revenue? Because if she deferred receiving it or something, I don't know. It if, it's, if it's revenue, if it's revenue, so this has to be, it went from 50 to 70. 70 so right. this was deferred revenue, which she's now been able to take as real revenue. revenue. Yeah. So it's increased the balance that we have available. Yeah. Why yeah. was it deferred yeah. in the first place, though? Because we are, there's always deferred revenue. Meaning what? It's income that because we're, we haven't been we paid accrue, yet. No, we accrue our monies. It's just like if we pay our bills for like insurance for a whole year, mm -hmm. then you just appropriate you prorate it each I, I, month or something like I'm that. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around that. All right. Yeah, that, me too. Well, well I'm about, have the, to about, ask about the income part because our whole budget is based on okay, okay. we're going to spend this well, much that's money, where and we're spending, spending, spending in our our balances are going down. 
Well, that so counts I'm, for ten thousand of it. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. How I don't do know. you how do you add income into this balance sheet? So ignoring ignoring that. Well, this isn't a balance sheet. Well, okay. This, this is an income statement. But it still yes. it still begs the question of, of what exactly is the deferred revenue and where does it come from? I understand what it is, but I don't understand what it is for us. That's what I don't understand either. Is it because we have a calendar year payment and it's in two different fiscal years and that's why it's deferred? I but it's, but I it's don't revenue. Understand. It's not. It's not an I expense. It's not it a either. deferred expense. It's revenue. Right. I don't know. Well, maybe well, we get the, it's the we first get the I've answer. noticed so, this, so I'll, so, you know. So, assuming her entry is correct, mm -hmm. and I'm sure she'll think it's correct, whether we think it's correct or not, um, what's our projection for year end? Okay. Well. How, what? Tight. Well, I know it's tight. Well, but I mean, well we, you saw the bills that are here, so if we hold off, you know. That's but those cool. those bills are included in this or not? That's my first question. That would be no. Because these, these, these are dated June 4th. And so this is June through? 6, so. 531. Yeah, so yeah, that's only 531. 531. So we have a whole month to go. Right? Yep. Basically, mm -hmm. one twelfth. Yeah. And that's about a hundred grand. Yeah. So we're going to. So we're about 30, I would tell you we're about 30,000 in the hole, potentially. Just quick and dirty. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you, Dorinda? Look at something. Because she might have approved the bills back to May. So that's what I want to look at. I, don't know. I can tell from this. Okay. okay. That maintenance bill was thirty thousand dollars on the equipment. Um, no, so no, that would be five twenty and this one is five thirty one. No, so that did not change. So, um, so that does not include these checks. I'm pretty safe in this one. Yeah. So. And, and I mean, I'm just doing a straight, which is, of course, right. it's the slime dog way to right. do it. But if a million two, if a million two is the total, that's a hundred thousand a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I do my finances at home too. <laughs> simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Got checks in the check <laughs> <laughs> um, And that does. And that does. Not include the transmission repair. Yeah, that power divider no, right. doesn't include that. And then you've got thirty thousand dollars there to Dubois construction. Yeah. Right. And you have mm -hmm. payroll for two. Right. Two yeah. Well, those two those two things. So there's yeah. so there's uh, whatever it is forty thousand dollars, which is yeah. not in the mill. <laughs> Not in the million two, unbudgeted. Because we've already spent our repair budget, correct? Oh, yeah. 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 Overspent. Well right. spent. Yeah. Wow. And we have roughly. Du Bois was what thirty thousand? Thirty. And then yeah. what do you what do you figure in the truck repair? Um, under ten. Okay. Nine ninety five hundred. Okay. Well, we'll call it ten. So our fund balance is one hundred eighty eight thousand. So getting back to what we were talking about before, during the. I agree. We have money. It's not we like have we're money. Gonna, it's not no, like we're going to run out of money. Well, that was. Right. I don't think we need to short-term borrow at least as of this week. Um, so, so here's here's a question though. 
and I don't know the answer, I know the question. The question is, would we rather pay those bills in June and overspend our budget big time or start out our brand new fiscal year big time in the hole? Because these are basically unbudgeted items. Our, our budget for next year is not going to cover these items in any way, manner, shape, or form. So it's going to be unbudgeted this year or unbudgeted next year. That's just well, your budget up. isn't go your number isn't going to change because it's still going to be accrued to this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Even if you go out and even if you don't oh. write the check till That's July, because the expenditure it's occurred. all the expenditure. Right. Ex Occurred in this month. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so if that's the case, if that's the case, we're getting it all this month anyway. Yeah. You're gonna. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. That's the new. It's the new way. Yeah. Okay. Sad but true. Okay. But it was a terrible winter. Uh -huh. Yeah. It I was mean, a terrible winter. I mean, that's what's well. This this, this the washout thing is yeah. that washout. And I'll find out on that. When was what was the date of the washout? June second, I think. Wasn't it? No. No. Before that. I mean, it was a, it was the, it was the Sunday night of Memorial Day weekend. It was like April nineteenth, twentieth, or yeah, something like that. Oh, in April. It's yeah. April? May. I thought oh, it was May. May. We just had What's the date on that oh, boys bill? The 24th or 20, 20, well, no, it was Sunday, right? It was a Sunday night. So that do boys one day. It was either if it was before the 20th. It was May. either the yeah, see it's uh, either the 19th right, or the right, 20 right. 6th. No, I think it's this one. Uh, it was May. Yeah. No. Either the but 19th or the 26th. Yeah. But I can't remember which one. Oh, here it is. That would be the 19th. That's what I was 529, and then what did this? They don't have a date. 529? Well, that was the date of no, their invoice. That's when they did the work. No, they, they look at the, they got the sheet. These things? 520? 521? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So it was the 19th. 19th, and then they were, yeah. Yeah, 521. Okay. Yeah. We should write down so we don't forget. I'm pretty sure that's not in here then. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little speed management in here, but uh, interrupt me and uh, and Stephen Mary, you were at the Welch Park meeting, uh, but for the benefit of uh, of Liz and Phil, um, we did have the Welch Park meeting at four o'clock. Uh, Carl was here, and we had the Benderson representative on the phone. Couldn't have been a nicer uh, uh, gentleman. Uh, what we agreed to do, Benderson, Benderson is basically willing to take over the well and pay the entire cost of... Which is 30000 Which is $30,000, estimated to be $30,000. Carl is not certain, and we are not certain whether we want to give up our rights to that well. Our share of that $30,000 bill would be 15%. So it's really um, not much. But we all, so it really isn't much. But we did find out tonight that our well is the most productive well on that whole property and it's uh, the most shallow, uh, which we didn't know. Our well produces six gallons a minute. This well that we would be part of only produces six gallons I a minute. I thought you said a four and it's, for us. For whatever us. it is. It what doesn't matter. It? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. it, 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 I think it is for Mary. I, I, stand, I stand corrected. But anyway, we have a very productive good well at our fire station. So, you know, does it make sense to be part of this? Who knows? What we agreed is Benderson is going to send out some kind of a little letter of agreement for us potentially to sign saying that they are going to go ahead at their cost and their risk and do these repairs. And they're going to give us until September 1st to decide whether we want to be in or out, which is out, pretty nice of them. Yeah. If, if we're, we're out, out, we're out. And we don't pay anything. And if we're in, we're in. But we because there are, there are questions with regard to, we have conflicting inf information um, from Bernie Chenette, and he was not available tonight. Uh, about what our potential use of that well could be. I really don't think 
we need that well. But we, we just have some homework to do and before we make a recommendation to you guys about what we should do. Did he seem eager to want the well? Like, no, is there no really care? He didn't. He, care. he doesn't really okay. care. He just said he just said you know we're we're willing to take over responsibility for the whole thing. Pretty nice of him. Um, but it isn't a big deal for us. It's a bigger deal for Carl. It's a bit right. It's yeah. a bigger deal for Carl because Carl has the potential for more development and more employees on his on his lot, and he has one of his own wells, which might be inadequate for that. So you know, he's in a little different position than we Why are. Why couldn't it just be Carl and? Could be. It could, could be. be. The other one is. Oh no! It's to, we're and you know, we're and then the about. question comes up, and the other question makes, that came up, which I think has. <laughs> we're not going to be able to decide that quickly, is whether the whole Welch Park thing should just be given up entirely, done and the, away with. And part of the problem with that is we don't know who would be the owner of the assets of Welch Park. You can't right. just have it disappear. And, and we have some lots that are used for the septic and for the fire, fire pond. pond. Correct. And the road. So, so we have some more. We have some more work to do. Lord. What we're what we're going to try and organize uh, on the twelfth of June is a conference call with the same cast of characters, but with Bernie Shinnett on the call to straighten out this issue of potential. Because Bernie was very clear with us when we met with him before, saying that we were never going to get to use any of that water anyway because it wasn't that because way. it wasn't it was, enough capacity. It wasn't enough capacity. But now okay. apparently. Uh, something has changed which none of us understand so we first of all <laughs> got to get to the issue of what could we have and what's what's the potential benefit and the only you know just we don't need to talk about yeah. this much longer but the one thing that I wonder is suppose all of a sudden that wasn't a fire department anymore and it was some kind of small manufacturing plant or who knows what it was would access to that water be beneficial? It might be. And, you know, do I really think we're going to fold up the firehouse? I really don't. But, you know, you got to think ahead and you got to, you know, we want to be smart before we give up our rights to these things. The other thing, the other thing I believe is, and this is just my memory, is that the leach field that we have the right to use as part of Welch Park is our backup leach field. For our permit, at so the we got to get we got to get to the get bottom permit. of that. Well, we got to get the permit out. Right. Look at it. So we've got questions before we're ready to say anything. But it looks like we're going to have until September first, at least, to work our way through these issues. So the the pressing issue is right now the consolidated building is has a temporary water situation, and the state has rescinded their nasty Graham okay. saying we are in violation, which is good, but they only gave us, and none of us could remember exact, but it's like 30 or 60 days to get this problem fixed. So we got to be careful we don't go past that. So anyway, the pot's boiling. So that water supply that the consolidated building is using, which is that Menderson owns, I thought they were using all of the capacity. That's what we were told. Yeah. But now we're saying now it no. appears They're there's two thousand gallons of capacity that isn't being used. Right. Okay. So anyway, we've got to get to yeah. the bottom of those issues before yep. we can make a rational decision. Yep. So that's that. Um, do we have a motion to approve the May twenty first select board so moved. minutes? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yeah, discussion update with discussions with RB Tech. Is there a quick? Yeah, I'll give you a quick. Uh, it, it, it doesn't get any better. Um, <laughs> after uh, chatting with Ruben and having him go back and have Holland put together everything, he sent me the list. So the only uh, the only computer we have that's running Windows 10 is Sarah's. They think that the one that Marika is using may have a Windows 10 license for some reason that was downgraded to Windows 7, but they've got to check because that's uh, a ACS. Is that who's that service that does the licenses? Yeah. Uh, well, that runs on that. The Nemrick, you mean? No, not Nemrick. No, the Marika stuff. Oh. Um, I don't know. Whatever. The program. Oh, maybe. for the that does all the deeds. Yeah. Stuff? ACS. Okay. ACS. Okay. So I mean, essentially, that's their computer. Um, although we, you know, we use it. So that may that may be fine. We may have to 
just buy a license to upgrade that. Everything else, including Paul's, which they didn't even know about, is running Windows 7. Oh, no. And it's, I, I was wrong as far as I was thinking it was July 1 that it was running out of support, but it's actually going till January 1. So we have. I think it's what he told us was January. Oh, what, was it? Okay. Yeah. For some reason I had in my mind it was, yeah. it was July. But so, yeah, it's January. So we got a few months. So we got to sit down and really think about what we're going to. Because it's not in the budget. What we're going to do. Of course not. <laughs> What's in, what is Whatever in the is budget? in the budget. <laughs> Jesus. Well, who knew when we were I doing know. this? No. I mean, you know, you didn't know they were going to get rid of um, the support. support. No. So. I mean, the irony is the Windows 7 functions pretty well, yeah. but they just don't want to support exactly. it. Exactly. As soon as they stop patching it, then then you know, yeah. we'll have problems. So, so we have well. more work to do. Coin drop. Coin drop. Yeah. yeah. Pig hey, I'm ready. Breakfast. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take my pancake breakfast and coin drop. I can I can cook up a wicked load of pancakes. Um, Ask people to donate their used laptops are probably better than the equipment we have. Right. <laughs> oh, no, there, are, there are so many people on Windows. I mean, uh, including me at home. I mean, I'm in the same. I'm yeah, in the same really? mess. Our right. organization is on Windows. Running seven. Now. I've got a. I've got a. I've got a laptop and a and a desktop which are on Windows seven. So I'm. Uh, okay. I'm looking forward to some kind of, and I don't think, and I don't think, even before that, what and I don't think that, that, that XP that, or something? <laughs> no, XP died a long time. Yeah. That, that I was, think that they was, have it, though. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's a massive upgrade yeah, issue for that's right. everybody here. Um, discussion on June 28th, Middlesex Town School District meeting on whether to grant an easement to town for certain uses of Romney after it becomes a WCUUSD property, no action. You, you've just got a copy of the warning here. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are a number of towns that are doing this. Initially, I didn't, I didn't understand this, but once I had a chance to read it, you know, part of me says, it goes back to the old thing, I've had the opportunity over the years to use U32 for all kinds of different things. I've never been turned down to use U32. So this fear that all of a sudden our school is going to be closed off to us may or may not be a legitimate fear. But is this a bad idea to do this? To have it ready. <laughs> well, who came up I don't with know. this idea? What? Who came up with this idea? I think it was Callus that came up with it first. Yeah. But then it, then well, it spread like it just had it spread all that like work. wildfire. Wasn't didn't they do all that work on their building? Well, everybody's done yeah. work on their buildings, Mary. I mean, it, it's just it's just the current. You got to remember, this is the current board doing this, not the new board. They are freaked out thinking and thinking we should also be freaked out that you know we may be having to go to this combined board to get permission to use what we perceive to be our own school are they really going to deny us the ability to have town meeting there on a building that we bought and paid for i don't think so but you know if if, if this step is a good step to make people comfortable I guess it's yeah. fine with me. So anyway, it's happening. All right. Okay. So there's nothing. There's nothing for us to do. This isn't a town issue, except that the easement is going to the town. So they, it does seem a little. So we're not voting for any money on this day either, are we? No. No. Well, there's so many votes. So yeah, that is. We haven't budget. voted for the full that's budget the bu yet, that's have the we? the budget vote day, I believe. Yeah, it's it? the same day. It's the same day. Oh. It's on that it's day. It's just a separate. No, no, no. They changed. They changed it. This yeah, is a different day. This is a week later. They moved this a week later. So there's so that's another on one. Yeah, there's one so. on the twentieth. Oh my god. Because otherwise it would be an article. So, right? so yeah. just to start out with. Are you kidding? They improperly warned us, but they warned it for the twentieth, and they warned it. The other issue, which I don't understand, is they're saying it's going to be a real meeting, not an Australian ballot vote. And I called up and said, hey, hey, Chris McVeigh, lawyer, person, ever since we voted, whatever it was, that the school Years meetings ago. were yeah. going to be Australian ballot, everything to do with the school has been an Australian ballot. And right. he said, well, we have a legal opinion which says if it pertains to land rights, it has to be an open meeting. It's on them. They're doing this. It isn't on us. 
But they were going to have, listen to this, we were going to be having an Australian ballot budget vote at the town hall on that day and having a live school meeting at the Rumney School on this issue on the same day. You think that was going to cause some confusion and misunderstanding? Yes. Oh, my God. So now... So anyway, it's a, at least it's a week later. It's the 28th instead of the 28th. Is it going to be an Australian ballot or is it a live meeting? It's a live meeting. For the vote? No, it said Australian. I thought I read something today, <laughs> Australian ballot. Or no. Is that a live meeting? Not involving Australian ballot. Right. To act on the following business so not involving Australian ballot. Oh. So it's going to be the first school meeting we've had in 20 years. Okay, and I'm so not that's sure not that's even legal, but I guess I'm not going to worry about it. They got a legal opinion saying it's okay. <laughs> But I was sitting here, Sarah was telling me all this stuff. I was going. <laughs> but the budget vote's going to be by Australian ballot, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. And that's on the 20th. At 530, how many people do you think are going to come would, out you would for think, that? Yeah, right. The no. school board. You would think that something to do with <laughs> land rights and easements would have to be by Australian ballot. Well, the other thing give. is, wouldn't you think, now don't get me wrong, no. but this easement is going to the town of Middlesex. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. Wouldn't you think they might have mentioned this to yeah. us? Right. Yeah. Well, they've never been kept in touch with us. I mean, really. what if we say, we don't want it. We don't care. We don't want it. <laughs> Give it back to you. Or what if we don't let anyone use yes. it, even though we have it? <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. I'm not, we wouldn't do that. Whatever. But I mean, it's just a little, the whole thing is, is more than a little bizarre. But anyway. Okay. Um, orders are signed. Okay. Now your three issues. Quickly, my three issues. So the uh, park, the beach, has a request, has approached Paul oh, about yeah. grading the road there. Um, and apparently we've done it in the past, which I didn't know. It seems a little bizarre to me. That's a pretty long. I mean, I don't think that's an that's hour's work. Yeah. I think that's half a day to grade that thing, isn't it? Yeah. I heard, well. <clears throat> I doubt. I mean, I don't know what it is. It, he didn't bother to answer my happening. question. I said, how many, yeah. you know, what's the money, what's the time, whatever. He didn't answer my question. But Paul's looking for direction from us. Yeah. Well, the question is, how long have we been doing this? Do we know? Did this start with know. Paul? I, Apparently, I wasn't, with Gary. Paul wasn't. said we have done it a number of times over the years. All he gave me was a written response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I'll have to. I didn't know. But I guess what I would do is recommend that our road commissioner deal with this question and decide if it makes sense and whether we should do it or not. I mean, if it's a yeah. little thing and we've done it in the past, that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, why aren't the other towns contributing to this? Why doesn't the city of Montpelier send their grader out? Because they've got a lot more people using it than we do. Speaking of grading... Um, Can I just finish quickly yeah. my three things? So does that make sense to everyone that yes, Steve absolutely. will deal with Paul yeah. and they'll figure that out? Um, you all now did get a copy of that letter. I, I mean, basically, they need to do a traffic study to correct those problems, and they've committed to do it. That's the good news. The thing in there that jumped out at me that I mentioned before is they said, we are responsible for speed control, and I believe what he should have said was, we can, if we choose to, conduct speed patrols there at our cost, and that we are not able to get reimbursed if they give any tickets because the tickets go to the state. Well, I so think what we we've should... always decided is we have, from time to time, asked our contractor to do some speed work in different places, but his statement that we are responsible yeah, just doesn't ring true to me. So well, that's I something think we, we have to challenge that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean... So we should maybe ask Sarah to do yes. the letter. Yes. Hmm. Same the music, that's not and the music team. licensing that we've, uh, we've already dealt with, that was good. That was good news. I started reading through all that stuff. Boy, it made my headache, I can tell you that. Big time. Uh, just a quick question. Remember um, uh, Warren Road, how we, what, mm -hmm. what we, we ended up keeping that as a class four. Yeah. Because it was graded. Is that culvert. normal for us to grade the? 
They, I, we, I don't think it looked like a professional grading because the grader had come by on our road, and then I saw that Warren Road had been graded too, and I was like, oh, I thought we weren't doing that anymore. Mm, yeah, we weren't. And it could be that they just. I mean, he might have hired someone, but it was right no, at the same time the no, other grader was there. He wouldn't have hired somebody. Yeah. And it looks very professional. It's very wide. and So you think we did it I by think mistake? I think we did it by mistake, mistake, maybe. Probably. The, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it was <laughs> us, too. I didn't see the grader, but I, I saw we the kept it at four, so we maintained the culvert yeah. form, because nobody yeah. could have yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and we do do Afford occasional that. grading on Class 4 roads. But, yeah, so yeah. maybe. But we don't do the big spring beautification no, grading no. that it sounds like. It's actually, actually yes. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> down grading. I know, and I was like, oh, he's my right. site. This is great. I'm like, Class send, 4, they send better than it used to be. Let's send Bill a bill. Oh, dear. Oh. Yeah. So I am gonna I am gonna reach out to Mike. I mean, I, I don't know how we stop this pot from boiling. And should he know, have told us I, before? I mean, it, I think, it's meeting over. I or? think the only way that you're no, gonna stop the pot yeah. from boiling is that the select board is gonna have to work <coughs> as close as they can with the fire department until things get resolved. Yeah, and that's gonna take some work. Yeah. Well, I almost think I almost think we need to ask them to come in here and meet with us once a month, or something like that. But let's get to let's get to the bottom of the issue about do we really have control or not? Because right, if we don't, then the decision we have to make is do we want to continue? Because the, because you know there are, there are a number the the options we all know what the options are. Option number one is to. Uh, hire the city of Montpelier or some other entity to provide our fire protection, which is likely way more expensive than what we're paying now. Um, option number two um, is to tell the 501c3, whatever their name is, that you know they are no longer allowed to use any of the equipment and we go out and hire, recruit, you know, whatever we do. What we talked about the last time, I think, is having two or three. Do you remember, Mary? Mm -mm. <coughs> I don't know paid, if you're about to stay. Paid oh. firefighters, real firefighters. <coughs> and then their job is to supervise and recruit volunteers. Um, and how that would work and what it would cost and, yeah. you know, I mean, it would be... And do you, you still know. get mutual aid with that kind of situation? <coughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Because he paid for mutual aid anyway. Yeah. So, you know. Again, as I've said over and over again, the real for fire protection we get from our guys is that we have mutual aid, and they do. Right. Come. Yeah. And thank God they do, because so, if we ever got booted out of mutual aid, so I think it was your question, Mary. How do these other fire departments feel about our fire department? That'd be interesting to know. But oh, that was Cindy. I'm sorry. But let's let's wait until we know whether we have yeah. control of them. Could you just ask Sarah to explain <coughs> the articles and the bylaws too, or the five and ones? Yeah, that would be? yeah that would be one okay. worth looking at. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm. Okay. Alrighty. We're done here. Yeah. Are we adjourning? <laughs> I'm adjourning. I'm done. Yay. Yay.